The research we have conducted at the Institute of Global Health and Development at Queen Margaret University um, really focuses on um, health financing systems and approaches in fragile settings. What that means is that we look at countries that come out of big crises, political crisis, economic crisis, um, war or um, um, epidemic in some cases, like the case of Sierra Leone and Ebola, and we try and figure out what happened with the health system and the, the funding of a health system. So usually the health system after these crises is weak or weakened and in some cases has completely collapsed. So what we try to um, study and understand and provide advice to international organization is about how to use the scarce resources that they are available to make the health system function and provide services um, to communities and people in these countries. Health financing is a broad term that we use to understand one of the function of the health system. It, it kind of relates to how money is used within a system and it, it has different, um, different sides to it, different aspects to it. So it means uh, where the money is coming from. Is it coming from external organization, from the donors, from uh, humanitarian aid, from NGOs, or is it coming from the government, or is it coming from the people themselves that they pay um, for health services when they access to them. But it also we also look at um, how the providers are paid. This means um, how we, are we paying um, the, the health workers and the hospitals? Are we giving them um, a budget? Are we giving them a salary? Or are we paying them based on performance? So these are the different components of health financing systems that we look at. And as I said, in, in these countries, um, the resources are scarce. So we need to figure out what the priorities are. Are we going to fund um, the hospital that it's very big and provide the tertiary services, so very advanced care in a town, in a big city, or are we going to uh, fund a small rural um, healthcare um, centre in, in, in a village? So these are the type of choices and priorities that we need to, to set and, and define. As often is the case with uh, fragile settings, the settings that come out of crisis, there is really not much specific guidance that focuses on these contexts. And these contexts, they face specific needs. They have um, more health needs than in other contexts. They have weak governments, so the system doesn't really work and needs to be strengthened. Um, they, have, uh, they face a transition from donor aid to having to rely to domestic, uh, so internal funding. And these are specific challenges that are often over overlooked. So our research is particularly needed to try and advise these countries uh, moving out of uh, crisis and in the post-crisis phase um, after some, some conflict or some, um, some political unrest. We work both at um, a global international level and at national level. At global level, we work with international organizations, for example, the World Health Organization, the World Bank, um, or the Global Fund for the Fight of HIV, AIDS, and Malaria. And we provide them um, some evidence and some guidance about what to do in these contexts, uh, which is, as I said, it's, it's quite complicated and sometimes it's uh, very specific. It depends uh, on what type of crisis was affected, on how the health system was affected, what um, type of funding and financing um, they need. So um, we work with these international organizations to uh, provide evidence and guidance based on that. We work uh, also with national governments, for example in Sierra Leone, in Zimbabwe and most recently with international organizations engaged um, in Afghanistan to try and advise them on how um, to uh, restructure um, the health system and in particular the financing of a health system and how to channel funds in a way that it's effective um, to um, improve and increase services for their population and the, and the communities and the people who need that. It's an interesting question. We're not, um, we, we work on very, very technical um, issues that are sometimes quite abstract. But uh, what is interesting and what I think it, it's motivating for us in terms of the impact that we have on the, uh, on the population level is because we're really looking at um, day-to-day -day life of people and improving that. Are people going to be able to access the services? Are the drugs going to be there? Are the health workers going to be motivated and capable of providing services? And this is uh, what really makes the difference uh, for people in these, in these countries and communities.
So for me, one of the one of the highlights of our research is really being able to engage with countries at country level and um, go back regularly or live there for long periods of time and see how the countries, for example, like Sierra Leone, have done um, in terms of strengthening their health system and making it more resilient coming out of a big uh, crisis like uh, the civil war and then through the Ebola epidemic and then the recent um, COVID-19 and how uh, the system strengthening and the, uh, the improvement in financing have helped uh, mothers and children in the communities in Sierra Leone. So we're really proud of the um, impact that this research is making in countries like Sierra Leone and Zimbabwe. And also we're um, proud of how it's going to expand in new countries where we have started engaging, um, such as, for example, Myanmar and, and Nepal. And there we're going to see how uh, we can reflect on different um, innovative health financing systems to make sure the system becomes more resilient and stronger in the longer term.